During the 1920s, Cowan Pottery was one of the nation's leading potteries and the Cleveland area's only major pottery. The Cowan Pottery Museum, located primarily on the first floor of the Rocky River Public Library, features over 1,200 pieces of a distinctive form of American art pottery created by R. Guy Cowan and his associates at the Cowan Pottery Studio in Lakewood, Ohio from 1913 to 1917 and in Rocky River, Ohio from 1920 to 1931. A lot of the shapes and, and uh, glazes that were developed at the Cowan Pottery Studio uh, just looked very new and different and people were quite enchanted with them. Um, it, uh, it is a, a gorgeous kind of pottery and it really is unique to the area. And of course we are unique in that as a public library we're the only library in the nation with a pottery museum. Founded by R. Guy Cowan in 1912, the Cowan Pottery Studio produced outstanding and technically extraordinary pieces which brought international recognition to American art pottery. Mr. Cowan was not native to this area. He was born in East Liverpool, Ohio, which is a great pottery center of Ohio. There uh, were about 300 potteries there over the period of a century, uh, and it's in the east central part of the state, right along the Ohio River. And so that's where his family uh, lived, and they were all potters, and young guy uh, grew up in the potteries and apprenticed with his father. And uh, his mother persuaded him that he really needed to get some academic background, too, if he was going to really make something of himself in the world. And so he enrolled at Alfred State University in uh, western New York State, uh, which had a brand new school of ceramics. And he started there in 1902 and got his degree in ceramic engineering in 1907. Now, like many students today, he had some problems getting a good full-time job after he graduated and, you know, did a few uh, brief stints in various places. But finally, uh, the city of Cleveland uh, uh, hired him, well, actually it was the Board of Education uh, that hired him to start the ceramics department at the brand new East Technical High School that was located at Scoville and uh, East 55th. And a few years later, when West Technical High School opened, he was also asked to do the same thing there. Uh, and so his teaching career began uh, very early. And at the same time, he uh, also started taking classes uh, and eventually taught at the Cleveland School of Art, which of course is known today as the Cleveland Institute of Art, and that's how I'll refer to it by its current name. Uh, and it was at the Institute of Art where he started meeting uh, a lot of the movers and shakers in Cleveland's art world. It was a very exciting place in the uh, early 20th century. During the 19-teens and on into the 20s, all of the major cultural institutions were founded in Cleveland, except for the Institute of Art, which had been founded earlier in the 1880s, so that was a little older. But the rest of them, like the Art Museum, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Natural History Museum, uh, were all founded around the 19-teens and early 20s. Uh, so Guy Cowan thrived on this. He was an intellectually very curious person and uh, was you know, interested in a broad range of subjects. Uh, he had gotten his degree in ceramic engineering, but he you know, was interested in many things. And that degree encompassed courses in you know, both the arts and the sciences and technology. So he had a really good background in chemistry and other sciences and technology, but also um, you know, had, had the liberal arts background as well. Now the thing was, he was very confident about his abilities in science and technology, but not quite so much uh, was he uh, as confident in his abilities as an artist. So that kind of motivated him to um, always study and try to learn more and practice more and uh, research. Uh, he did a lot of research about art uh, and you know he was never quite satisfied with his abilities but he ended up being the most prolific of the artists and designers at the Cowan Pottery Studio and he did some lovely pieces. Um, so you know he was probably a little hard on himself I think but, um, but because of that slight feeling of inadequacy that you know propelled him to do even more research and to learn more and uh, he had 
you know, no bones about working with other people. He wanted other, um, you know, colleagues of his to come and try their hand at ceramics. Uh, he even invited his students to come and work with him for a while. Uh, and even some colleagues that he met in the general art world that did not live in Cleveland, uh, he persuaded them to come and uh, do some work at the Cowan Pottery Studio. So he was a very collaborative uh, individual. As he began to know more and more of the artists in the Cleveland area, he became also acquainted with the uh, wealthier people in Cleveland who served as patrons of the arts. And they liked Mr. Cowan. They liked his work and they liked his ethic and uh, they were willing to support him. So um, finally, during the year 1912, 1913, while he was still teaching school, um, he decided it was time to start his own pottery. And he got the financial backing from several wonderful donors. And um, by the fall of 1913, he opened his first uh, studio, which was called the Cleveland Pottery and Tile Company. And that was in Lakewood. So Cowan Pottery did start in Lakewood, okay, and it was there for about four years uh, until the First World War broke out, and um, of course this meant that everybody went off to war. But before that happened, they had had several significant uh, jobs, especially in tile works, because that was what they specialized in at that time, because it brought in lots of revenue, you know, there were big jobs. And uh, one of the most famous jobs was that uh, the Cowan Pottery Studio, known then as Cleveland Pottery and Tile, uh, um, did the tile work for the floor of the indoor garden court at the new Cleveland Museum of Art, which opened in 1916. And pieces of that, of that floor lasted right up until they started the uh, recent renovation in about 2005. So once the war ended and people returned and went to the uh, Cowan's uh, property at um, Detroit and Nicholson Avenue in Lakewood, um, they discovered that the gas well was becoming depleted and the gas well was necessary for firing the kilns. So therefore Guy Cowan started looking around to find another piece of property and he discovered that uh, Rocky River, right across the Rocky River, um, had lots of functioning gas wells at that time and actually they still do have some and so he bought a piece of land um, several acres right on uh, the eastern portion of Lake Road in Rocky River and it backed up to the Nickel Plate Railroad which is today Norfolk and Southern of course and this uh, was you know, a very good location for him it was easy to find and uh, he could use the railroad to uh, ship his products and his goods and to receive his supplies. So uh, it worked out really well. There was already a green barn and an old farmhouse on the property and he built about eight more buildings and most of those buildings are still there on that property. The uh, Cowan Pottery Studio in Rocky River uh, began in about 1920 and in fact there was a little advertisement in the 1920-1921 yearbook of Rocky River High School, you know, announcing the Cowan Pottery, and so it was definitely a going concern um, by that time, by the early 20s. And, you know, rather than tile, Guy Cowan focused on other things, on individual pieces, and items for everyday living that could be put into production, as well as uh, unique art items. But whether they were, you know, the more limited edition items or the uh, production items that were produced en masse all were held to the same um, high standards of you know, artistic quality and that's why they were so well liked because even the affordable pieces looked like you know, artworks and they also had a really new distinctive look about them. Now he did start um, you know, by using some of his um, uh, you know, works that were done in, in the classical style or in the manner of the arts and crafts movement. Um, but he moved fairly quickly into more modernistic styles and uh, Cowan today is most well known for its art deco pieces. Uh, and there were quite a few of those, but you know, it wasn't limited to art deco. It was really a bridge between the uh, arts and crafts movement of the late 19th century and um, the Art Deco movement that started to uh, become popular during that period between the two world wars.